Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Gruul Goblins deck featuring Groom Gully, the Generous, a new addition from Throne of Aldrain, legendary Goblin Shaman saying each other non-human creature we control enters a battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it, so great synergy with some of our other goblins, like Legion Warboss as the 1-1 Goblin token will now pick up a plus one plus one counter right away, and of course Cranko Tin Street Kingpin that can also generate a bunch of Goblin tokens that will all pick up the extra counter from Groom Gully. The major reason to play goblins, of course, is Goblin Ringleader for mana for a 2-2 goblin with haste, and when the ringleader enters the battlefield, reveal the top 4 cards of your library, and put all goblin cards revealed this way into your hand, and the rest goes on the bottom. And now that we no longer have Goblin Chain Whirler, going into green for some of these Gruul cards is worth it, as we also get Zurta Goblin at 2 mana, a nice 2 mana 2-2 two -two with riots, so either a 3-3 three -three or a 2-2 two -two with haste. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck here at 1 mana. We've got the full play set of a Goblin Batterets, 1-1 one -one with Mentor, and for 1 and a red we can give it plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, so reasonable mana sink in the late game too. Then we also have the full play set of Tin Street Dodger, 1 mana for a 1-1 one -one Goblin Rogue with Haste, and for a single red the Dodger can be blocked this turn except by creatures with Defender, not too many of those in standard. Then we also have the full play set of Goblin Crater Maker, 2 mana for a 2-2 two -two Goblin Warrior, and for 1 mana we can sacrifice Crater Maker to deal 2 damage to target creature, or destroy target colorless and non-land permanent, so mostly going after artifacts, and there are a few artifacts worth destroying in standard, think uh, Witches Oven out of the various sacrifice synergy decks, and we are playing Crater Maker instead of Ember Hauler, because the double red casting cost is prohibitive when we have 9 forests in our mana base. Then we've got our Zurtan Goblin. At 3 mana we've got a bit of a weird split between all the different cards. 2 copies of Krenko, Tin Street Kingpin, and 3 copies of Groom Gully, because they are both legendary, so we don't always want to draw multiples. And uh, there are multiple board states where Krenko doesn't really get to attack, so it can be pretty bad. But we do have the full play set of Legion Warboss, which is not legendary. We don't really mind drawing multiples, and it's usually the better card since we get some advantage right away from the 1-1 Hasty Goblin that the Warboss generates. Then we have some non-creature spells as well to round out the deck. Again, don't want many of them because of the Ringleader, but we do have room for two copies of Icon of Ancestry, giving all our goblins plus one plus one. Also a great mana sink for three mana, helping us find more goblins. And then we've got a few removal spells, two copies of Lava Coil to deal for damage and exiling opposing creatures, and two copies of Shock as a cheaper removal spell that can also damage planeswalkers or players. And then taking a look at the mana base, we have 25 lands total, because we do have cards like Icon and Ringleader that help us find more action, so we don't really mind hitting our land drops. We've got 12 mountains, 9 forests, and 4 stomping ground, so all lands that come into play untapped, because our deck is all about curving out, applying pressure, and hopefully making lots and lots of goblin tokens. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, our hand seems fine. Don't have a 2-drop, but can always just pump the bannerets on turn 2 instead. And then the ideal sequence, I guess, is Groom Gully into Krenko, so that Krenko picks up a counter, but we could also play Krenko first, if we think the coast is clear. That way the tokens we generate from Krenko will pick up a counter from Groom Gully the turn after. So no 2-drop, so we'll just uh, pump the bannerets. I'm okay showing them forests. Banner is pretty similar to the Weasel back from the new set, but Mentor, of course, a nice bonus. So opponent on some sort of teamer deck, maybe Elementals. So don't necessarily expect my 3-drop to die, so I think I'm gonna go all in with Krenko here and hope for the best. So we'll attack for one. And then hopefully we get to untap with Krenko, play Grim Gully. Oof. Well, we got punished pretty badly here with Flame Sweep. Grim Gully would have survived, so my opponent must be on some sort of team or reclamation deck instead. So now I can ringleader or play Grim Gully. I think I'll ringleader. It's more mana efficient. I'm pretty likely to find some one or two mana goblins that I can play alongside Grim Gully. There we go. Three goblins revealed. 
as well as a land. And then next turn I get to go Grim Gully plus maybe Azurta with haste. That will also still pick up plus one plus one from our legend. Our Boreal Grazer. Alright. Still no Wilderness Reclamation, so opponent shocking their land into play implies maybe another Flame Sweep. So playing Grim Gully plays around that nicely. Maybe a Counterspell. Alright, fair enough. Sinners of Sabotage. So I can attack. Shock and play Bannerets, or I can just play a 3 3 Zurta. Don't mind getting the Banneret in play, so let's Shock and play Bannerets. On the one hand, playing Bannerets doesn't need me to kill Grazer, because then if I pump this, I get to Mantron to Ringleader, and they'll both be 3 power to get past the Grazer, but it is the most mana efficient play. So now, points at 15, 2 cards in hand, could be holding another Flame Sweep or Counterspell. So I think my play is going to be pump Bannerets, attack, and then play a 3 3 Zurta second main. Does it resolve? Nope, another Flame Sweep. Fair enough. If I want to play around a counter spell, I could also just play Ringleader second main. Maybe that's better. Make sure I find those extra goblins, hopefully. Spiral. Alright, found another Ringleader, that's great. Castle Ventress from my opponents, so they will be able to find some action soon. So now I think I like Dodger and then double Zurta as 3 3s to play around Flame Sweep. So we'll play Dodger. Pass a turn, opponent gets to scry. So they got some pretty good uh, exchanges with their flame sweeps. But we're still doing okay, thanks to our ringleaders. Main phase chemisters. Maybe digging for that wilderness reclamation. Don't mind casting shock end of turn. Alright, so on board my opponent's taking 9 damage. They could still have another Flame Sweep, so if I play the other Ringleader, they would only take 6 down to 4. And I think if I attack with all and they have a Flame Sweep, they're probably tempted to run it out anyway, in case I have another Shock to burn them out. So let's attack first. Right. Opponent's at 1. Yeah, let's just play Ringleader's second main now. Probably should have tapped my mana slightly differently, so I could potentially play multiple reds, one drops that I drew. I don't really see a reason to play them out here. So, play land, say go. Opponent needs like Flame Sweep plus Expansion Explosion maybe, to deal 4 to everything. Alright, there's a Reclamation at long last. But I'm at 18, so Explosion doesn't kill me. Chemisters discarding Parahelix. Sure. Don't know if my opponent plays Fog, but uh, we'll find out soon enough. Right, there's a flame sweep. Do they have a way to copy it? Let's 
They've cast three flame sweeps already. All right, my opponent explodes. So the goblins able to defeat Team of Reclamation. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, especially if we pick up land number three. That's kind of the reason why we're playing 25, so we can make sure we hit our third land drop. Which is very important in the deck. And turn two, I think I like Hasty Zurta. And the combination of Krenko into Icon of Ancestry is also pretty great. So hopefully we get to pull it off. Opponent fetched an island. Is this a once upon a time? Must be. So some sort of Sultai deck. Thought Erasure can take Krenko or Icon. If they are on just blue-black control, the Icon could be the scarier cards. So I might see them take that if they have some sweepers. Alright, they take Krenko instead. So, in that case, I'll just uh, jam Icon while we still can. Name Goblin. Alright, opponent on Asper. I guess could be a Dance of the Man stack. Campaign. I guess I didn't expect my opponent to play something like Campaign, otherwise I should have played Mountain instead of Forest last turn. Because uh, red sources are more valuable, but wanted to deny the extra information, and yeah, got punished right away here as we draw a red one drop. All right, fair enough. We'll just uh, jam a hasty Zurta then. Opponent could have a ritual of soot to wipe the board, but then we can follow up with a hasty dodger, and it has to be an untapped black source here. So Swamp or Fabled Passage, and our opponent explodes, so sometimes just curving out, beating down, is all you need to do. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, hand looks good. Decent curve. Dodger into Crater Maker into either Grimgully or Krenko. Facing once upon a time. Finds Shifting Ceratops, alright. So it's not super likely that Krenko can attack past some big green creatures. But we'll try. If I play Grimgully first, then of course Krenko will be a bit uh, bigger. And will make more goblins the turn I attack with it. But playing Krenko first means I can attack with it a turn sooner. Leaf Kindred means my opponent can potentially run out Ceratops next turn, which Krenko can't really attack into profitably. But I guess Krenko would be too powered, and then I can use Crater Maker to finish off Ceratops, so it's not the worst. I'll attack in case they respect a pump spell here. Opponent takes it. There's a Ceratops. And there's a Shock, so I can take out Ceratops if I spend Crater Maker and Shock killing it, but I think I would rather get Krenko in play and then try and leverage that. So no attacks for now, just play Krenko, say go. And then hopefully we get to turn Krenko sideways. Hoping to dodge something like a Voracious Hydra killing my Krenko. Speak of the Devil. So that's too bad. A ringleader can help us refuel. Or I can play Grunguli. I could basically trade Crater Maker and Shock for the Hydra, which is not particularly tempting. Then my ringleader would be one bigger, but how much does that matter? I think I just ringleader and then hope to find some goblins. 
and then next turn I can play Grim Gully and play some bigger goblins afterwards. It's gonna be difficult to outsize a mono green deck, but uh, hopefully we can outvalue them. Although Nissa is pretty scary too, especially knowing that our opponent has Hydras in their deck. So I can double block forests, or I can double block ceratops. I think I prefer double blocking forest here. Even if that means losing Crater Maker. Find another Crater Maker. So I can go Groom Gully, make a 4 4 Zurta Goblin. What's my plan to deal with Nissa? I could shock plus Crater Maker the Hydra, attack Nissa for 3, but that's still not nearly enough. So I guess we'll. Uh, Get Groom Gully in play. And take it from there. So the way I envision winning this game is probably by finding more ringleaders, finding a icon of ancestry to find more goblins. But I also need to manage this Nissa before she ultimates. Can always use a dodger, of course. The land fights for us. Ugin the ineffable. Yeah, that's gonna be hard to beat. And another Ceratops. Another dodger, but Groom Gully's gone, so it only hits for one. And I can only make one dodger unblockable, so I guess I can take out Ugin. And then I can either play another dodger to maybe pressure Nissa next turn. Or I can play some uh, other goblins here like Crater Maker. Crater Maker could also destroy Ugin, since it's a colorless non-land permanence. So I guess we've got that for a future Ugin. But I'm probably going to be forced to... double block a Ceratops with my Tutus here. In fact, I might actually have to chum block. Just to stay alive. Aggressive Mammoth, everything tramples. So now chum blocking uh, doesn't even look all that appealing. So yeah, if they attack with everyone, I'm pretty dead. If I don't die this turn, I'm still pretty dead next turn. Don't think we have any outs at this point, and 8-8 is very hard to beat. Our deck doesn't line up well against these giant green creatures. So this seems like a pretty tough matchup. So everything attacks, I'm at 10. So this tramples over for one. Take two, plus another nine. So there's no way we can survive here. All right, GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, reasonable hands. Turn 2 Crater Maker, hopefully turn 3 Krenko gets to attack. And we've got Crater Maker to potentially clear a path. And then Ringleader to refuel. Opponent with an end of turn once upon a time. They should probably just take their draw step first. Finds Paradise Roots and a Breeding Pool for my opponent, so some sort of blue-green creature deck. Well, if my opponent has a turn 3 Wicked Wolf, we're gonna be very sad. Playing Grumguli mitigates that a little bit, because then it's at least a trade if they try and take out Grumguli. But then they would just eat the Crater Maker. I think I'm just gonna play Krenko, hope for the best. 
Should have attacked first, but uh, I doubt my opponent's blocking. Do we have a Wicked Wolf? We have an Oko. Alright. Are we Elking Krenko? We are. Do have a backup, but if I play another Krenko, it does die to the legendary rule. I'll have to sacrifice one of them. But instead, I get to play Ringleader. And uh, send everyone at Oko. Alright, find some more goblins. So if they want to save Oko, they'll have to let the Paradise Druid go. Alright, opponents on Sultai, food, turn for Nissa. Do have the Lava Coil as a nice answer. Sadly only single red, so don't really get to double spell here. But I can use Crater Maker to finish off the Paradise Druid. Another Once Upon a Time finds Wicked Wolf. Yeah, it's gonna be rough too. But at least I get to kill Nyssa. I must seek comfort in the land. I could wait if my opponent uses Wicked Wolf to kill Ringleader. Then I can use Crater Maker to finish off the Wicked Wolf. That's one option. Small chance my opponent doesn't have land 4 to play the Wicked Wolf in the first place. I think I'm okay killing Paradise Road here. Also prevents another Nyssa from happening. They do have the land into Wicked Wolf. Eats Ringleader. Alright, another red source is good. So let's attack. Opponent trades. And now playing another Krenko is appealing, now that the first one's gone. If my opponent has a second Wicked Wolf, I guess I would rather play Grumguli instead of another Krenko. So let's do that. Ideally I would play Grumguli and then uh, a Goblin in the same turn to get value right away. Instead it's going to be Goose, and ooh wow, Once Upon a Time missed, so they must have found a bunch of Once Upon a Times and Planeswalkers. I'll take it. So, 6 mana total, double 3 drop seems pretty good here. Can go double Warboss, or Warboss plus Krenko. Double Warboss is tempting, gets a couple 2-2 two -two tokens right away, apply maximum pressure. And try and punish the opponent's stumble here. And then we've got a ringleader to refuel. They do have another wicked wolf, this time with the food. But if they sack the food, the wolf will be tapped. And uh, pretty sure they're dead here to ringleader. Alright, sweet. So beat Sultai food with our the Gruel Goblins, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty decent hand. Nice uh, one, two, three. Alright, let's see what we're up against. If we're up against a red deck, making this a three, three seems pretty good. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. That way it doesn't die to shock. Blue reds. So next turn it's pretty interesting. Augur Bolas. At least the Zurta can attack past it, finds Electro Dominance. Now that we find second Grim Gully, playing the first one first makes sense. So we'll just hit for three. And play Grumguli. And if we get to untap with Grumguli, that's great. We get to maybe play a Warboss. If it dies, we've got a backup. 
We Dragonauts, alright, so some sort of is it spells deck. But uh, yeah, I get to jam the war boss. And I could send everyone, because if I just send these, they get to double block the token and eat it for free. Whereas now they can block the token, eat my banners, but then the token survives for next turn, which seems valuable. And I'm not going to have the mana to pump Bannerets anytime soon, since I have all these expensive cards in hand. Opponent did not block with the Augur Bolas, not sure why. Opponent is at 8. Firemind's Research. Alright, more setup. Maybe an answer for Grimguli, a Jai's greeting. Fair enough. They could have considered casting the greeting in my turn if they wanted to bonus from the Wii Dragonauts to persist in my turn. So they could maybe trade off. Now they're committed to attacking. If I play Ringleader, I'm pretty sure they're dead. Because we get an extra 1-1. And I also get to Mentor. Alright, sweet. So Gruul Goblins can be pretty savage, especially when curving out like that. So yeah, definitely a fun deck to try out and doesn't use too many rares. So if you have some of those like the Legion Warboss already, it's pretty easy to put the deck together. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.